The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Friday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and you got markets in positive territory. Quite a lift from where we were just a week ago. You're talking about almost 200 S&P points. Pretty remarkable. You back things up to where we were last Friday. Spike low on Friday coming into the long weekend. 36.39. You make it up to 38.34 overnight. We're just off of those highs. 38.29. That's eight tenths percent in the green in the S&Ps. Nasdaq 100. You're positive by nine tenths. Nasdaq. You take a look at where we were last Friday. You're talking about 750 points, just like that. Quite a week as you get you a little bit of a bounce across the board. The Dow. We were at 29,600. How about almost getting 31,000? That's about 1,500 points you're talking about on the Dow. We're currently up 207 points. Uh, that's two-thirds percent. And even the Russell, pretty decent gains. You're talking about almost 80 points in an index last Friday that was trading at 1649. You're up about seven-tenths in the Russell. So all the indices between about seven-tenths and nine-tenths, nine-tenths percent in the green. Russell, seven-tenths. Dow, seven-tenths. NASDAQ, 100, nine-tenths. S&P's up eight-tenths. Broad rally. Crude. Up $2 right now, that's 2%, up to 106.36. And you see crude just been chopping around since that low of Wednesday. Now crude, you talk about a reversal in the market. The S&P almost 200 points higher. Crude, $10 lower from where it was last Friday. That's not even cherry picking the low. $10 right now from where it was last Friday, the high 116.58. Gold contract, giving back some of the gains it had had. Gold was at 1861 last week. You're trained at 1822. You got the silver contract down 31 pennies to 2073. And notes and bonds, excuse me, we get a little bit of a reprieve from the higher price and lower yield. You, uh, I was talking about on my program yesterday. Let's see what time this is at. Yeah, that's what was happening. Check out that charge higher. And I don't think we got to a two handle, but it was close, man. We were at about 3.03, I think, 3.02. Maybe we did get down there. I'm not sure if anybody knows what the exact low yield was when you had that spike on the 10-year to 118.08 yesterday. But nonetheless, the 10-year right now trading at 3.09%. You back things up to where we were, 114.07. You're almost three and a half points off of that low. But man, all you're doing is you're coming right back into the lows of May 6th. We'll see how the market reacts. Uh, already, you see a couple tails getting into that low, that price point, basically where we're sitting right now, zooming in on the action. The exact low on May 9th, 117.08. The low of the body there in terms of the opening, where are we? 117.20. Uh, so you're talking about only a couple ticks from where we're trading at right now in the 10 year. And we jump over to the VIX, volatility index. Looks like we're waning a bit. Maybe that's the uh, the spike. I mean, you see the trend, right? We get these spikes, and usually when you get a pause, you get a reprieve, the VIX will start to wane. Uh, looks like we have some waning numbers there. As you're talking about, check that out. This would be the sixth consecutive red bar in the VIX after having a four-day top in the VIX, pushing 34.35. We're now trading at 28.76 in the volatility index. All right, jumping back to the S&P. So we're up 30 points. Uh, I was talking about it on my program yesterday. I'm going to start it off right now, man, with it because it's pretty cool when you take a look at this, folks. We're going to do two different Fibonacci numbers, okay? Maybe you saw this if you were watching the program yesterday, but longer, longer term, okay? Taking the whole run we had from the lows of 2009, 665, 75, just a remarkable number considering where we're sitting at, up to 4808, okay? We're currently sitting at about the 236 line. In that retracement, a 382 of the entire bull run from the lows of 2009 to where we kicked off the year, about 4,800. You're talking about a 382 number that sits basically at 3,200. All right, we're 10, 20 points away from that price level. The cool part about that is 3,200 is the price level that basically is the beginning of 2020. And that is also the 618 of the retracement 
from the COVID lows to the highs. So what you have is you have a nice area of confluence, folks. I mean, I've, if you're looking for an area for this market to pull back, I would keep 3,200 as an area that maybe you start putting some risk on. on. You would be 1,600 points off of the high. And again, that doesn't mean that that's the end. We'll talk about it. There's a lot of Wall Street talk now um, about X percentage even further from here if such and such happens. It's definitely possible. We're going to see if it plays out in the next three, six, 12 months. It's going to be a very volatile time potentially if inflation rages and does not come under control. Uh, crude oil, probably a good week for everything considered that we have crude down about $10. That's something that's going to have a huge impact on this economy. Uh, crude prices just absolutely, absolutely raging recently. Okay. Back to the shorter term time frame on a five minute chart. We've just been chopping around the S&Ps right at this price level since about midnight Eastern time. You were trading at 3825. You've been chopping around at that price level. Let's jump around to some of the headlines. And here's some of the percentage I was talking about. So S&P 500 may have another 24 to to fall. Uh, that's quote unquote 150 years of market history showing. Well, as the disclaimer likes to say, folks, if you're in the finance world, Past performance not necessarily indicative of future results doesn't mean that's what's going to happen this time. This time is a very different scenario from many scenarios in the past in terms of what is shaping the inflationary pressures that we're dealing with right now. Um, bottom should be as much as 40% below the January peak. That's what they're talking about here. Uh, Society General, which calculates the benchmark gauge, may need to tumble as much as 40% from the peak. That number... 2900 now the reason why i say 3200 is a lot more comfortable is because it's a pretty dire prediction right 2900 i'd feel a lot more comfortable taking heat down to 2900 if i was putting more money at risk at 3200 than if i was at 3800 risking another 900 points from where you're trading at right now now, I also talked about in my program yesterday, just for some context here, because 2900 seems like the world is ending, folks. But if you back things up on a monthly, uh, that's a weekly, excuse me. There we go. I mean, you got to remind yourself that, you know, we've had some volatility in the past, but I'm not even cherry picking the year 2000 and the, two, the year 2007, the 2008 pullback, where the market literally got cut in half. So that was a 50% pullback, okay? That was, I mean, it was more than that. It was from 1,500 to 665, right? And in 2000, it went from 1,553 down to 868. In 2000, you had companies that had absolutely no revenue even and just had a dream that were valued at ridiculous numbers. Not necessarily what's happening right now, okay? We're going through a tremendously volatile period, but we got some strong companies um, that just the multiples got a little bit out of whack, but they make a lot of money in the long run. In 2008, we had just an obscene real estate collapse fueled by a bubble of all bubbles, people just taking out loans left and right, kind of a game of hot potato with real estate, uh, barely flipping it, and then people caught in that bind when they barely have the equity and they go negative, and that cascading effect blows up in credit markets, okay? But taking just where we were when Trump got elected, which I believe is somewhere right here, yeah, 2100. That was in 2016, it's not even six years ago. We were at 2100 and the economy was rocking at 2100. Remember the feeling in November of 2016? The economy was rocking. We were at 2100 from 600. We're still at 3800. 2900 wouldn't even be the end of the world. Context is important. Stay tuned, folks. We'll go over the equities that are moving and we'll get back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We've got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell. You get the S&Ps up 30 points. We'll see if we can hold here. Uh, after today, you're talking about only four trading days left in the month when we come back next week. July 1st, a week from today. And of course, we've got another long weekend coming up next weekend. Not bad. That's two out of three. We'll have long weekends. I can get used to that for sure. Bitcoin, taking a look at Bitcoin on a daily basis. You break lower on June 13th. That was the weekend. So we're talking about two weekends ago, right? Was when Bitcoin accelerates through that number. You come back on Monday and Bitcoin goes from 27,000 down to a close of 23,150. We've just been chopping around on that floor of 20,000, kind of a dicey area to say the least. Now, what's interesting is you back things up for Bitcoin, man. You talk about an important area. This is when futures started trading, folks. Remarkable that you're talking about almost five years ago. Remember that? I can't even believe that that's the date. December of 2017, almost five years ago, because I remember at the time all the discussion was, hey, Bitcoin's at 20,000, and for the first time ever, you're gonna be able to short Bitcoin in a regulated environment with futures on, I think the CME, right? Is that where they trade? Uh, nonetheless, what happens? Hindsight 2020, but seemed like an easy short, and it sure was. You ride it out for the year, you go from 20,000 down to 3,000, you reset the market, then things really accelerate higher. We break through 30,000. That's been an area it had held basically since the beginning of 2021. And just like that, you break below 20,000. And we're kind of in no man's land here for Bitcoin, currently trading 21,175. You jump over to Ethereum. Ethereum, uh, not as long going back. You only go back to February of 21. Excuse me, but Ethereum at 1207, that's a monthly pretty scary chart. If you're talking about an A to B, C to D, let's just put it back even on a weekly since we're going to get all the action anyway. From 4,900 would be the A point, your B point. Somewhere around, you could take the exact low of 2,100. That would be a B leg of what, 20, uh, A to B leg of what, 2,700, 2,650? Yeah, 2,650. And you're talking about off of about 3,600. Look at that. That actually got us there. So you got Ethereum which is crazy to think about, right? Because you're talking about an A to B leg of, yeah, 26, 2700, we'll call it. About 4,900 down to about 2200. 2700, you had to come down. That would have got us to about 900. It was really 2650 maybe. 
what, 2750? 2750 to be exact. Yeah, 2158. So about 2750. And that would take us to about 850, would be the exact low. Maybe it has to get to 850. We got to 1010 on Ethereum, uh, checking in on cryptos. All right, back to equities. We jump over to FedEx. They had their numbers, strong numbers last night, drifting higher in the overnight as well. They had a conference call that began last night, uh, spiked to 242. We're at 235. That's $9 higher. They had an $11 move priced into that equity for their earnings. Uh, so just under the expected move to the upside for FedEx. And we'll jump back to some of the companies that are moving today. 687 a share. They beat by one penny. Shipment volumes declined. Interesting, right? But we're offset by increased shipping rates and fuel surcharges, man. So FedEx is shipping less items, and they're charging more for shipping, and they're charging you more for fuel on top of it. They're able to transfer those costs forward to their customers. They beat by a penny. They come in, and uh, the market likes that, man, in a big way. Uh, CarMax. They were higher as well, so they beat estimates by seven cents with a buck fifty-six revenue. Beat analyst estimates amid the company called a challenging used vehicle market. This is going to be an interesting one to see how this plays out, even from just a CPI cost perspective. There's your action on Carmax. You're at ninety-one bucks now. This thing has had quite a pullback from one fifty-five back in November. Let alone there's your five-year weekly. You got CarMax barely above where you were trading at in 2017. Let's see if we can go back further. I mean, that's quite a run for this equity. You pull back to where it was basically coming into 2020 before the sell-off for the pandemic. Uh, but you're going to open, and look at that. They've actually given up some of those gains to 91 bucks for CarMax. But that's going to be an interesting one. As used vehicles, we're out of whack in a big way. We're still seeing some shortages for cars. How is that going to play out as potentially you have less consumers buying cars. I mean, one thing that you may see, folks, if things really wane, right, if you're trying to buy a house, that payment going up dramatically. So maybe you're going to ease a new car purchase if you got to pay a mortgage rate at 6.2%, et cetera. These things will matter. Um, a car, if you can put it off, maybe you're going to put it off right now with the slowdown, some layoffs. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. CarMax, a little bit lower today. I say layoffs. We jump over to Netflix. Netflix is laying off 300 people uh, up about two bucks to 183.60. This thing, of course, been in big trouble recently from 701, we'll call it, down to 181. Yeah, you had a low of 162, but you put this thing, and that's just a weekly, folks. You're basically chopping around to where you were at lows of 181 for Netflix shares as this market just drifting a little bit higher coming into the open. You get the NASDAQ now up 1%. Now, let's see out of curiosity, does this go back? I don't know if the NASDAQ goes back far enough. Yes, it sure does. So I was talking about that we have confluence in a nice area of about 3,200 in the S&Ps. And let's see where that lines up, actually. For the NASDAQ, in terms of where we are. So the NASDAQ, a 382 retracement of the entire move higher, gets you to 10,747. Interesting. You're a lot closer already to 382 of the entire run higher in the NASDAQ. Whereas a 3A2 in the S&P brings you back to 3,200. So think about that. For all the run that the NASDAQ has had, that pullback has gotten you almost to a 3A2 of the entire bull market run, folks, from 2009 to the highs coming into this year. And meanwhile, if we just do just something like that, you will see the S&P sitting at about 3,200. And if you get that type of action, you're probably looking at a NASDAQ 100 or maybe 9,000. And you know what, folks? That shouldn't be too crazy because all that is is right before the pandemic. And if you remember correctly, things were really, really, really good before the pandemic. The market was bustling. We had almost record unemployment, right? It's tough to remember because the market has risen so much during that time. Man, if that happens, okay, if we get that type of pullback, you are going to see some pullbacks in the leaders, man, because you can't get that type of a pullback without seeing it happen in Apple. Apple already basically sitting pretty similarly just above the 382. Or where it was, and let's back up Apple here for a second. What do we got? Yeah. Look at this run that Apple's had. Yeah, so they started, jeez, look at this. They start split adjusted in 2009 at $2.47. A 382 in Apple brings you down to about $113. 
not out of the realm when you think we've already dropped almost $50 where we're sitting at right now. What is the recent low on Apple? 129 and all I'm talking about is 113 Get you back to the 382 That would be a $25 drop from where you're trading at right now, though. Quite a number. Can you believe that? Apple split adjusted. What is it? $2.79, and you're trading at 138 Whew. Just remarkable, the runs. Now, there's some context for you, okay? There's some context for you. What is Apple trading at? when Trump came into office. It just relates to the human mind in terms of what was going on then. Apple was trading at 28 bucks in 2016, right? Market was rocking already, folks. Apple had a little bit of a pullback. It's important to remember some of those numbers when you think about where we may pull back to and things will be okay. So make sure you have your risk adjusted to tolerate what may be possible in this market. Stay tuned, folks. We got the opening bell coming up. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got markets open, and you got a market drifting a little bit higher. S&Ps right now up 34 points, back to a five-minute chart. You see an acceleration. We just made a high above anything we, that we were trading at pre-market in the S&Ps. you got the NASDAQ up 126 right now. You have the Dow up 255. Let's check in on some of the companies that had their numbers last night. FedEx catching a pop. You're up about $10.29. Expected move is about $11.00. So it catches the lift to the upside. Uh, FedEx up 4.4%. CarMax had their numbers last night. Down about 1.2% for CarMax. Let's see how Carvana is trading. Uh, down about 2.7% for Carvana. Maybe uh, something in those CarMax numbers not too beneficial for Carvana, maybe as they come out with theirs in the future. 
this stock. You talk about a pullback, man. 376 to 28. <whistles> Remarkable. All right, let's check around on some of the growth stocks. Roku, up about 1%. That thing's gotten quite a lift recently I've been talking about, but the growth stocks, they've gotten some lifts for sure. DraftKings has been battered a bit, uh, catching the lift off the lows, but these stocks, they got to catch more, little, more, um, more of a lift than this is what I was trying to get out there. DraftKings up 1.8%. Let's check around some of the FANG stocks. What's going on? Amazon. They're down eight tenths percent right now. Why are they trading lower, right? Everything should be higher on a day like today. Microsoft up 1.7% right now. You got Google shares up 1.3. Apple up 1.3 as well. We jump over to Tesla shares up about eight tenths percent. Some of the chip makers, NVIDIA. I mean, look how close we are to the lows still, though, folks, getting some of these bounces. NVIDIA up 1.1%. AMD shares right now up 1.6% right now. All right. Jumping around to what else we have going on, some of the other stocks that we were looking at. We looked at FedEx. We looked at CarMax. So Citi named Microsoft a top pick. That's why they're catching a little bit of a bid out there. Uh, Lending Tree, lower by almost 8%. We'll see how they're doing. They cut the current, current quarter guidance. Recession fears, higher interest rates, and inflation factors for the revision. Lending Tree, right? Rates going through the roof in a big way. You jump over to their chart. Yeah, down 7%, man, to $51 as this market catches a lift to the upside with the S&P now up 40 points. All right, we love Fibonacci numbers, folks. I spent the beginning of the show talking about a nice area of confluence at 3,200. So then you say, okay, well, how high are we going? Well, let's see what we got in terms of Fibonacci numbers. I'm going to take these numbers off. Whoops, excuse me. Let me take that number off. Take these Fibonacci numbers off for some clarity. Whoops. Remove drawing, and let's see what possible areas we have for a bounce coming in from this trend and the most recent. All right, we're basically there. 38.49 is going to be the 3.82 from where we are right now. You're trading at 36.39. We'll see how we come into that area. And if you back things up a little bit further, we got three different moves, right? You have the most recent acceleration lower. Pretty remarkable that you've already got almost a 3.82 retracement of the entire move lower from 41.75 down to 36.39. We have the larger trend that began on March 29th. Now, it's not a clean move, but I still want to see what type of retracements are possible here. You're talking about a 3A2 of that retracement. You're basically sitting at 4,000 on the dot, which is interesting. Let's take that off for a moment, and let's see where we go if we're talking about from a full number. If we get a bounce from the entire move pullback, where are we talking about? Keep these in mind, folks, because we have... A decent duration of time left before these markets are really able to gain some low volatile low volatility times for the next three months at least the market's going to be hanging on those CPI numbers which is then going to have it hanging on the Fed decisions depending on how those CPI numbers react uh, come in and the Fed reacts so it's not outlandish to think that we could get good data for a month, the market may accelerate higher, only to reverberate to the downside, or vice versa, right? We could get another bad couple months before things really reverse in dramatic fashion. There are all possibilities out there, so don't discount the fact that you can get an extreme bounce here when we just traded from 4,800 to 3,600, ballparking. A 3A2 of that area gets you back to 4,000. We're almost at 3,850 right now. That's only 150 points to the upside, and meanwhile, we just bounced 200 points in a week so of course you can get 150 point rise if you get up to 4,000 or 4,100 be very careful folks okay realize the risks in this market are ever present at least for the next x amount of months i'm ballparking i'm generalizing uh but you got to realize that things are not sorting themselves out this month next month or the month after that this is going to take three six twelve months at least until we get some real clarity number one what's happening to inflation and I'm going fundamental here along with technical, okay? But it's gonna take a while to have some real clarity that the longer term trends in inflation are now with us versus against us. And after that happens, or during that happening, over the course of that happening, what is happening to the economy? What is happening to the odds of a recession? Are we in a recession? How deep is that recession gonna go? What type of a pullback are we gonna be dealing with 
as the economy tries to get inflation under control, and we have rates at 6.2% for the 30-year. Now, I think you'll see that 30-year ease a bit with the 10-year coming back to about 3.1%, but it may not ease that much. And that is a real-term impact. We still have crude trading at a price level of 106. Can you believe we're talking about crude levels easing at the pump and we got crude at 106? It's a new normal, folks. Okay, and that's going to be ever-present for at least a few months, and I'm being best case best case possible. The bull case, as they would say on Wall Street, is that within a few months, you get some clarity that inflation is behind us and maybe the economy is not getting wrecked. But that's a pretty hopeful scenario. And there's not a lot of data that points to within a few months, inflation being under control and the economy not being on its way to a recession. I would say the other way around. If anything, it points to within a few months, inflation still being an ever-present issue, even if it may be waning, and at the same time, we have economic indicators pointing to the fact that we probably have a recession coming if things are going as they go right now. You know, maybe we get some easing oil prices. Doesn't look to be the case. We've already eased. Maybe we get some easing rates, but how are we going to get easing rates, folks, with inflation at 8%? That's not what's going to cause inflation to wane, money becoming free again. It's a tough one. Jump around and see what other articles I had up here. I want to talk about SPACs real quick. Uh, the SPAC era comes to a whimpering end. Some interesting stats here. Uh, just talking about some of the companies that went public, then they went private back again. Uh, stay away from all the SPACs, folks. The most notable, probably Digital World Acquisition Corporation, President Trump, uh, that thing. Just a disaster on its way to 10, I'm sure, from this chart, it looks like, folks. You spiked to 175. You were at 100 as recently as March. This thing's a one-way trip. You're sitting at $28 right now. Uh, not sure Truth Social is going to be the juggernaut that it was labeled to be. And one of the reasons why people love SPACs is because you did not have the regulatory handcuffs that news usually come with an IPO. You can basically say a lot more than you would normally be able to say in an IPO when it comes to your expectations, your forecasts and your plans, et cetera. And meanwhile, none of it is held to fruition if it goes wrong. Now, check out some of these companies. SPAC Healthcare Merger Corp combined with the telemedicine provider SOC Telemed to bring that company into the NASDAQ in November of 2020. In the first day of trading, it closed at $9 a share. They're a public company less than a year and a half in April it boomeranged back into private hands when it was bought out for just $3 a share by Patient Square Capital. Imagine this, right? You're back in companies that are private. You push them out to the public in a SPAC. You let the market pull all that money back to a realistic value, even more so, and then you buy it back. They probably would have done it again if this market didn't get exposed to what a scam it usually is. We're going to talk about a couple other companies when we come back, folks. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now. You're talking about a futures up 48 points at 3847. How about the NASDAQ 100? We're going to get a 12,000 print? We just might, folks. You're talking about 1,000 points off of the low that we were at eight trading days ago. Yeah, that's last Thursday. And last Friday, we had a low of 11,119. You might see 1,000 points by the end of the today. We'll see where we go. Now, the NASDAQ 100, if you talk about the pullback we had, let's reset this because we are below that level now. Let's take that off for some clarity. Let's take that one off too. Back this out. And I just wanted to see from where we were on June 3rd, because we're catching quite a bounce here. And that's not going to be the exact point. But yeah, you're now well above the 382 retracement of that entire pop. The 50% is at about 12,000. The 618 is at 12,249. On that number, you back up the NASDAQ 100, because that is such a small bounce there. What if we just talk about the move that really we've had? 12,685. That's an area I'd look in the NASDAQ 100 because you're talking about an area right where we consolidated in the beginning of June before you sold off again. That would bring you right back to the 382. 12,685. That's a good 700 points above where we're at right now in the NASDAQ. All right, finishing the conversation about SPACs real quickly. Uh, a couple other cases that they highlight here just in terms of how absolutely uh, – Unfortunate. This whole event were for in terms of the money that they're taking from individual investors. You had an auto insurer had taken a buyout offer from a publicly traded insurance company, Lemonade Inc. And Metro Mile, which is that auto insurer, is currently trading for less than a dollar a share, far below the 17 it traded at after that acquisition corp. Um, blank check company finished merging with it earlier last year. And then they talk about Red Pox. Now, this one's definitely an interesting one, Redbox. Uh, the company, famous for renting DVDs from vending machines, so it accepted an offer to be purchased by Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment in a deal that assessed its total equity at $31 million, less than 5% of the value when Seaport Global, Global Acquisition Corp. Got to love all the names for these. Chicken Soup for the Soul, Seaport Global Acquisition Corp. Helped them go public. So less than... 5% of the value from when they went public, but in in a flashback to the meme traders, as they say here, uh, they've sent that stock soaring far above the price shareholders will get if the deal goes through. And there's Chud Redbox. Whoops. Oh, that's not it. Let's pull up Redbox here. RDBX is their symbol. Uh you know, if you like trading meme stocks that have nothing to do with the fundamentals underlying the company and are complete momentum play of hot potato, don't end up with the stock or it might be worthless, then this stock might be for you. You're down 4% today to 948 on their shares. Uh, we're as high as 18 recently, just recently 11 days ago. Uh, but Redbox, another SPAC deal gone bad to going good. As we have the S&Ps continuing to drift right now, up 52 points. All right, what else do I have pulled up here? Talking about SPACs. We had our biggest movers. Yeah, we talked about Netflix. So they're laying off 300 more employees. 
NASDAQ, United Airlines, their pilots getting raises. Not surprising in terms of the battle to get pilots right now in the air, right? We just, what were the stories yesterday? United was cutting flights to Newark, I think. Or one of the airlines was cutting flights to small cities. I think United was cutting to Newark as well. Maybe it was American. Netflix laying off 300 more employees as revenue growth slows. Not what you want to see from a big growth company. Uh, a month after the company eliminated 150 positions in the wake of first subscriber losses in a decade, they warned investors a couple months ago that it would be pulling back on some of its spending growth over the next two years. That's what you should be doing. If you're not going to be taking in the same revenue that you were thinking, you can't be spending the same money that you had planned when the revenue is not going to be there, especially in this market. Uh, the market is going to punish you if you're losing way too much money right now in an environment where growth numbers are coming down in a big way. But the chief financial officer said during the earnings call in April that Netflix is trying to be prudent about pulling back to reflect the realities of the business. However, they're not going to do it with content. They're going to spend $17 billion on content. I mean, how are they going to make money, folks? If you got the competition they have, they're not even growing subscribers and they're spending $17 billion in one of the biggest battles out there is going to be they're up 2.7 percent right now with the nasdaq climbing up 1.8 percent right now uh one of the biggest battles out there is going to be live sports coming down the line soon just uh last week i think it was or the week before so disney's up 3.1 percent right now quite a low 9201 disney was battling with some of the biggest streaming companies out there they got the tv rights to some sports going on in india i think it was cricket but they did not get the streaming rights. And each of those independently going for like $6.7 billion. I'll try and find that article uh, at the next break. And I believe it was Amazon that even pulled out Amazon. Bezos, one of the wealthiest guys, if not the wealthiest guy in the whole world right now, said, you know what? I would love to be in streaming in India for, for cricket. I think that's what it is. I'll pull it up. But I'm not going to spend $7 billion to do it because I'm not going to get that money back, especially for their company probably where you're not really making that money back. It's just kind of one perk that's coming with the prime contingent. Uh, but nonetheless, they weren't even in the bidding, I think, at the end to illustrate how expensive some of this stuff is going to be. And that's where the growth is going to come from. Some of the most viewed programs on television, folks, I think they're all live sports. And they're, you know, the Super Bowl is the number one, I'm pretty sure. And they go down the line. But live sports, there's nothing like it right now. And that's going to be the most expensive thing out there. These companies aren't even paying for that right now. So that's been a battle for Disney. Uh, if you're looking at Disney and Netflix, though, folks, I would say Disney a million fold over that company because Netflix, they're changing their business plan. They're trying to create a new business plan for that company. Disney has their business plan, folks. There's only one Disney, the, the IP that that company has in the long run. You can't match it. And they're going to be putting out hit after hit folks as the years go forward and uh they have a business model i mean you think about the merchandise right i got two young kids one five one 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 year old in my house and the merchandising that disney does there's nothing like it i mean maybe some of the shows like coco melon and some of the the spin-offs i've talked about that company before private company maybe but name me one doll that netflix has ever put out or merchandised yeah, I'm sure you have Stranger Things dolls, right? You have merchandise that flies with some of their programs. But compare that in your mind to the ability of Disney to merchandise brands like Mickey Mouse, to merchandise brands like Star Wars, Marvel, etc. There's nothing like it on Netflix, folks. Uh, and then you add the parks into it. Disney parks are going to be packed for two or three years. The world has changed. we got a backlog of people that want to attend Disney right now where things are literally sold out. That's going to be a big factor to weather some of the money that they need to spend in streaming as well. And they do need to up their ante because on the adult spectrum, uh, Disney's lacking, man. And maybe they don't need that as much when you got a stranglehold over the children, no pun intended. Uh, but you got the kids because, man, I tell you, we watched Lion King. Lion King was already going this morning, folks, in my house. It was going at about 7 in the 8 in the morning. Frozen gets played all the time. Um a bunch of other good ones that they just put out as well. Can't cancel that on the kids. I can cancel something that I watch, HBO. Maybe I'll cycle through those eventually, although I'm watching Succession right now, which is pretty good as well. Uh, but stay tuned, folks. I'm going to find the article that I was talking about for those streaming numbers. I think it was within the last couple weeks it happened. Amazon not even participating. And you're talking about 6 to $7 billion for streaming rights. That's India, though. 
one of the world's biggest markets as they're trying to make a hold into that company. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. S&P's up 60. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Quite a rise we got going in the market right now. We talked about the Fibonacci levels. 38.49 was the 3.82 retracement of the entire move lower from June 3rd. You're talking about from 41.89 about to 36.39. And we're going through that level right now with the S&Ps up a solid 1.55%. The NASDAQ now greater than 2% in the positive Dow up 1.2%, the Russell up 1.8%. So back to Disney streaming, the money that they're spending right now. And here is the article, okay? So Disney and Reliance bid $6.2 billion combined. So Reliance wins the streaming rights. Disney gets the TV option. And this was 10 days ago is when this came out. I think the actual auction took place June 12th. So this news out June 14th. The total value is $6.2 billion. That is now over the English Premier League as global firms vie for subscribers on the subcontinent. I would say so. Uh, India, I think they talk about it, 1.4 billion people, I think is the number. For the first time ever, you had streaming rights beating out traditional broadcasts. So you have Reliance winning the streaming rights at 238 billion rupees. That comes in at what? Probably half of that, I guess, about 3.1 billion. Right. And you have Disney winning the television rights for 236 billion rupees. The IPL 
lured more than 600 million viewers this year. 600 million in a market with almost 1.4 billion people. At $15.1 million per match, they take over the English Football League. And so, to jump through it, okay, this is a big tournament that takes place in India. The four contracts started in 2020 were up for grabs, broadly covering television and digital rights in the Indian subcontinent and overseas. Now, Amazon, they pulled out at the last second Part of the reason, they're just not willing to spend the money. Uh, they were thinking it might get up to $7.7 billion. They took in $6.2. Uh, Amazon probably changing their plans a little bit. When you get a little bit of a pullback, folks, you've seen the pullback Amazon has in their shares. Uh, not able to spend that type of money recklessly anymore as the market punishing them for losing money dramatically, man. Just this year alone, Amazon today up 1.3%. Keep in mind those companies, folks. They got a lot of money to spend. This market, it's catching a bid. Stay tuned, folks. We got live programming coming up. Have a great Friday.